Well, howdy, YouTube. Unky Joe here. Unky Joe's Playhouse today. Do you remember this video? All right, so I picked this up uh, the other day from client site. And uh, this is an example of what can go wrong and why you should be prepared if you're going to have clients. <clears throat> this switch, let me show you what it does when you uh, power it on. I'll use a PoE switch. It's a 500 watt PoE switch. So I don't know if you can hear that. The fans are spinning up. You see I've got yellow light, yellow light, yellow light, yellow light, yellow light, yellow light, no lights. I think it's clear you'll notice one thing right off the bat is this discoloration here as compared to over here. Now this switch is kept in a room that's at about 80 degrees all the time. This switch is kept on a uh, APC 1500 a uh, volt amp uh, UPS it has been its whole life it gets nice good clean power you can see there's not a there's not a speck of dust inside this thing it's in a nice clean room the power supply is back here the main logic board is up here and then all the ports are up here yeah that w that was not a good day YouTube that uh, was not a good day at all uh, and it was a it was one of many problems this client had including trouble with their ISP so We've overcome that problem, and we've overcome the switch problem. Uh, as you know, we put another switch. I had two gigabit, 48-port gigabit switches in reserve. One of those was the Netgear, and the other one is the D-Link. In fact, the D-Link was, the Netgear finally failed as well after running for about a month. Now, I caught a lot of flack on that video. Well, I caught a lot of flack in the comments section. And um, if you don't see your comment appearing in the comment section, there's a reason for that. Uh, because sometimes people just get a little too aggressive in the comment sections or they start uh, making comments that are just not, you know, they're just not very nice. Uh, and I get a lot of criticism that I was trying to get a new switch from Unify that I was, uh, uh, you know, that, that I didn't have the switch on a UPS. Uh, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. <clears throat> um, so just to clarify things, um, the switch was well out of warranty. It's a 48 port PoE and I tore it apart and showed it to you. Now I did make, uh, I did call ubiquity. Well, I sent him an email and I said, Hey, uh, you know, I understand it's out of warranty, but w are you willing to repair this thing? Because you can't get repair parts for these, uh, for these switches. And mainly it's, I believe it's a power supply that went out and <clears throat> I didn't even get a response from, uh, ubiquity. Uh, in fact, I sent two emails and never got a response from either one of them. It was like, well, it's out of warranty, so it's not our problem. But uh, they didn't make any effort to try and repair it or offer a repair service. Now, oddly enough, I had I had a couple of people, uh, a couple of subscribers offer if I wanted to send the switch out to them, they would repair it, um, uh, you know, good as new. But I got with the client, and in hindsight, we purchased that 48-port PoE thinking that we would have a lot of growth with power over Ethernet devices. Uh, turns out we didn't with this client. In fact, they've downsized a bit. So uh, I found a better alternative. It, it went against my better judgment to sell a switch with the PoE built into it. I've just had never had good experience with PoE switches. I found the power supplies just don't stand up. So what we did instead was to use a smaller Unify 60-watt power over Ethernet switch for those devices we wanted to power over Ethernet. Now, the other criticism I got is, oh, you're slamming Unify, you're slamming Ubiquity. Well, if a company doesn't perform, if a company sells a product and later doesn't offer repair services to it, that's on that company. It's not on me. It's not on you. And it's one less reason I would want to buy a switch, a 48-port PoE switch, or any PoE switch from, from Ubiquity, if they're not going to stand behind their products and at least offer a repair service on them. You know, that Netgear switch that I replaced this with uh, still has a warranty. Uh, it has a lifetime warranty. And and uh, I knew that when we bought that switch, and I knew that Unify didn't offer the same thing, or Ubiquity didn't on these switches. But I thought, well, they've been out there a while. They're tried, trust, and true. So I have no ill will against Ubiquity, but I just think it's kind of short-sighted for them not to offer repair services. And if you go out on the Ubiquity uh, website into their forums and do a search on these PoE switches, I'm not the only one having issues with them. So 
but I guess it just haven't hasn't gotten to the level of it, where it's on their radar where they're going to worry about it. In other words, you know, companies have to decide at a certain point whether it's worth repairing a product or just ignoring it and hoping that they'll make it up in volume, if that makes sense. So anyway, I spoke with the client, and I still wanted to use Ubiquiti products, but we decided to get a 48-port non-POE Unify switch and put that in this POE switch's place. So that's what this video is all about today. So everybody remember this client? Yes, this is the one where we had the 48-port POE Ubiquity piece of uh, uh, power over Ethernet switch. I was almost going to call it something else. Uh, it failed. Uh, our recommendation of the client was not to go back with another POE switch, but to just go with a standard 48 port switch. Now we had this Netcare uh, smart switch, gigabit smart switch on hand as a spare and it ran for about a month and then it has recently failed. I think I know what's wrong with this though. The uh, capacitors in here are prone to heat, what I call heat ex exhaustion, and then they'll pop, and that's certainly what happened because uh, two weekends ago, uh, I got a notification the network was down again, came out, and it was this switch. Fortunately, I had another switch on hand, and it's a D-Link uh, gigabit switch, and as you can see, it's running just fine. So uh, we put that in place. It's only temporary. It's gonna stay there, actually, in this rack. We're going to go ahead and remove this one and we're going to replace it with something else. So this will be the replacement switch. It's a Unify 48 port switch. Like I said, I don't trust the PoE switches, but I do trust the uh, Unify series of switches. Uh, and, uh, you know, because they don't have that PoE power supply in them, they're probably going to be a bit more reliable than the, uh, the PoE switch. So let's get it changed out. All right, so the switch is plugged in. Well, it's everything but power. We've got all the cables moved over. The reserve switch is down here. Just waiting, just in case we need it again. The old switch is out, so uh, let's, uh, let's plug this in. Jerry, you wanna come hold the camera? All right, so, moment of truth. And nothing. That's what I expected. There it goes. All right. All right, so now it uh, looks like it's booting up. We'll wait and see if it gets any lights here. We do have the blue light, which means it's booting. It should go white here in a second while it's looking for a controller. And then we should start seeing LEDs lighting up across with all the cables. If, as you see, we've still got some ports in reserve here. And this is what we use for our PoE Instead of getting a larger 48 port uh, 40, uh, PoE switch, we just use one of these uh, Unify uh, 8 port 60 watt switches. And now we got a flashing light. That's what we're looking for. And we should see the lights start coming on. These are the servers down in this rack. There's the Dell that's on loan to them from my company. And then they have a one, two, three super micros. Their PBX runs on this unit. They've got a battery backup unit here on the floor. Lovely, we got some blinking frickin' lights now. Hey, that's a good sign. So now what we'll do is we'll go up to the, uh, go up to my computer upstairs and we'll get this thing. I'll go ahead and adopt this on the Unify and try to get some footage of that. So there you go, switch is installed. It booted up as you can see just fine. And I was able to get into the, uh, to the Unify software. Now there was an update for the Unify software, so I went ahead and did that. And the important part is the customer is happy. Everything seems to be working fine. Um, so don't let my previous video throw you off of buying Unify products. However, I would seriously question whether or not it was it's a smart move to buy one of their PoE Edge switches because, like I said, there is a known issue with the power supply in those. Now, if somebody has found, or if Unify or Ubiquity want to contact me and reach out and let me know that that problem has been solved, then I'll certainly make a retraction video. But uh, at this point, I just, I don't trust the product, the Edge products with PoE. Uh, I just don't think those power supplies are up to snuff. And what's really troubling is, like I say, is there's, there seems to be no source of replacement parts to repair them 
when they fail and the and the item is out of warranty so buyer beware so there you go youtube we hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always please give us a thumbs up down below leave your comments polite comments down in the comments section donate if you're so inclined we take paypal we take patreon and uh let me know what your experience has been if you've got any of these edge switches with poe i have another client with one of these 48 port uh, poe switches so i'm keeping my fingers crossed that nothing happens with this client uh, but i'm keeping a close eye on that switch so uh but like i said i've already had one failure it leaves kind of a bad taste in your mouth among other things so anyway don't forget please come back and see us again and don't forget we'll see you on the other side